Today's financial advice is sponsored by Endeavor Private Wealth. Chris McGee, managing partner at Endeavor Private Wealth, is joining us for our weekly segment on investing. Chris, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us today. Glad to. So Chris, in just about 45 days, Americans vote in the midterm elections, and in some jurisdictions, early voting is already underway. I know our viewers will be interested in your thoughts on the role the economy may play on the outcome of the elections. Yes, the economy does play a role in the elections. Uh, there's a very famous expression that's often repeated by political pundits, and it's the economy, stupid. And that's a line from James Carvey, a strategist in Bill Clinton's successful 92 campaign against the incumbent, President George H.W. Bush. Clinton's campaign capitalized on the weak economy and then prevailing recession to unseat the president who only a year before had a 90% approval rating uh, following the successful ground war into Kuwait. Mm -hmm. And you know, things can change quickly in politics and the economy. You know, with our economy running hot, strong employment, but high inflation, mm -hmm. rising interest rates and a falling stock market this year, what does that suggest for November 8th? So let's just take a historical perspective. Only three times in history, 1934, 1998, and 2002, has the president's party not lost seats in the midterm election. So Democrats picked up seats in the House and Senate as FDR was putting together the great deal to ease the impact of the Great Depression. Then Democrats picked up a few seats in the House during Clinton's second administration despite the Lewinsky scandal, mm -hmm. and Republicans notched gains in the House and Senate following the 9-11 as George W. Bush's popularity surged amid strong patriotic mm -hmm. sentiment. And of course, you know, each election is different, you know, with its own unique set of factors that weigh on voters' minds. And this year, there's a host of issues in addition to the economy that may be uh, headwinds or tailwinds for candidates. Yeah, as you said, things can change quickly. So let's think about this. In the 1994 midterms, during Clinton's first administration, the S&P was up a mere 1% in the 12 months leading up to the election, and his party got schlacked, and the Democrats lost control of both chambers. And then 12 months later, the market had risen 23%. If you consider the 13 midterm elections going back to JFK in 1962, we found that the average performance of the stock market in the 12 months before the election was barely over 0%. Then looking out 12 months from those 13 midterms, we find that the average performance of the stock market was up 16.3%. In fact, the S&P 500 has never been down in any of those 12-month periods. Now, past performance is no guarantee of future performance. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and is there any explanation for these um, investment results? Uh, one possibility is that policy uncertainty before the uh, midterms uh, contributes to the market's unease, and with the policy becoming more certain afterwards. You know, uh, Chris, we're short of time, but um, any final thoughts or suggestions for our viewers as to what they should do? I think our voters should get out and vote. <laughs> you know, that's pretty sound advice right there. You know, Chris, we always appreciate your time. And to learn more about Endeavor Private Wealth, visit EndeavorPW.com.